to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and good morning. Welcome to the Lincoln County Commission meeting of Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024. It's good to see everyone here in person, and we'd like to welcome those that might be uh, viewing uh, live stream and listening and so forth. Um, I guess uh, the first thing we have today uh, in front of us is to, uh, I need board action to approve the agenda. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I would offer a motion removing number nine from the consent agenda for our consideration today. Thank you. Okay, removing number nine of the consent agenda. All right, is there any? A second. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to remove number nine from the consent uh, to the con from the consent agenda. Um, call the roll. Commissioner Landine. Yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes. Commissioner Schmidt. Yes. Commissioner Gibbon. Yes. Uh, I would now like a motion to approve the consent agenda. Is there any public input on the consent agenda? If not, uh, move for approval, Mr. Chair. Second. A motion by Smith, second by Poppins to approve the consent agenda. Kristen, call the roll, please. Commissioner Landine. Yes. yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes. Commissioner Schmidt. Yes. Commissioner Gibbon. Yes. Thank you. All right, moving on to our regular business, item number one. Um, Toby, I guess that is yours. Mr. Chair, I'll step down. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Toby Brown, representing County Planning. Uh, what's before you this morning is uh, four separate ordinances. Uh, these were drafted by staff after recommendations from the uh, ad hoc committee that was established by the Board of Commissioners. Again, the ad hoc committee was established by the Board of Commissioners uh, to look in depth at carbon dioxide pipeline transport and storage facilities ordinances. Uh, that committee met a number of times, had some great discussions, had some great testimony. Out of that, really, staff kind of uh, worked with the, the, the group to focus on kind of four main land use type concerns. Uh, those primarily being um, what types of definitions would we be using for this type of an ordinance. Uh, second would be is what type of setback requirements would be utilized uh, for the different types of uses. And then the third thing would be what zoning districts would these be allowed in. And then number four would be what zoning uses would be these, uh, would, would these encompass. And so I won't go specifically through each ordinance unless you want to uh, sp speak specifically to them. I'll speak in generalities of them. Uh, the first ordinance uh, before you uh, would establish, um, we'll start with the permissive use one. Uh, so specifically, this ordinance would amend the uh, zoning regulations for the unincorporated area of Lincoln County to incorporate definitions out of the CFR Code of Regulations. Again, these uh, definitions are federal definitions, as well as the state of South Dakota through codified statute has adopted these definitions as well. Uh, these are the same definitions that would be through all four uh, different types of ordinances. Uh, so specifically, this ordinance would uh, again create a permissive use for carbon dioxide pipeline with a setback of 330 feet from a single family dwelling, church, school, nursing home, hospital, business, public facility, public park, or concrete animal feeding operation. And since it is a permissive use, this would be a hard setback. So the only way that the setback could be waived is if the landowner specifically waived it through a, a waiver or a, a setback document. Uh, setback from municipalities would be two miles or 10,560 feet. Uh, same standards would be in the A1 Agricultural District and the RC Rec Conservation District. And again, that would be a permissive use. Uh, second ordinance uh, specifically would be a permitted special use. Uh, this particular ordinance, again, same definitions. Um, this ordinance would look very specific to the ones that were submitted by citizens um, in the previous year. So it would be a permiss or permitted special use of 330 feet, again, from those same types of setbacks, and 10,560 feet from a municipality. But in this particular ordinance as a permitted special use, it could be flipped to a conditional use permit. And so the setbacks could be overridden by the Planning Commission through a conditional use permit. This would be in the A1 district as well as the RC Rec Conservation District. And then a, th a third one uh, would be... Um, 
this would be a specific a rezone. So the only planning or the only zoning district that a carbon dioxide pipeline would be allowed in would be the I-1 light industrial district. So if there would be a pipeline or a production facility, it would have to be zoned I-1 light industrial. There would be no set standards for those uh, because the rezone would 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 be, you know, it, it's that part of the process. Uh, wouldn't would be a, a hurdle, I guess you'd say. So we wouldn't have a setback within those. And then the fourth ordinance would really be a conditional use permit, non-standard conditional use permit. So again, same definition, same uses within the A1 and the RC. However, it would would it be it wouldn't have a setback standard, but it would require any type of application would have to be a conditional use heard before the planning commission. Uh, one other item that I failed to mention those other three, three ordinances is that as well as the, the committee suggested that we increase the notification requirements. So again, in Lincoln County for a conditional use permit, there's a 500 foot notification requirement, except for CAFOs and wind energy conversion systems. We would also add carbon dioxide production facility and carbon dioxide pipelines to that requirement. So I went through that really quickly with you. If you have any specific questions about those, I guess at this stage uh, as an agenda item, uh, staff is requesting some feedback from the board. Uh, if, the, if the Board of Commissioners wishes to proceed with these ordinances, they would remand them to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission then would take up the ordinances at a public hearing and then give a recommendation back to the Board of Commissioners, which would be the appropriate step. Um, don't have any real recommendation on either one. I think all four ordinances give you kind of a framework uh, for what many types of uh, different ordinances could be uh, presented. So with that, happy to answer any questions that you have for staff at this time. Questions by this commission for Toby? Toby, was there, a, was there any prioritization of any of these uh, uh, recommendations? No, they just, they voted over the framework. General they framework. voted yep. consistently just on the merits of each one. They didn't. They didn't vote specifically on these ordinances. They voted on the framework for it, okay. the setbacks, the land uses, the zoning okay. districts. Yep. And didn't we establish the the uh, uh, procedure that this would go to planning and zoning for them to vet, and then the planning and zoning come back and make a recommendation to the commission? If you send it back, yeah. yes. Yep. If you vote to send these, either four, or one, or whatever ordinances yep. you want to send back, yes. Tell me, were there discussions about any fee structure? Uh, not specifically, no. Thank you. Yep. <coughs> any other questions by this commission? Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, at this stage, public input. I guess uh, I will limit it to uh, 30 minutes. Um, 15 minutes for the proponents, 15 minutes for the opponents. Um, so I guess uh, public input. Uh, let's begin with the uh, proponents first. Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll begin with the opponents. Again, uh, three minutes, uh, and we will um, uh, try to, like I said, limit it to 15 minutes. Okay, seeing none, um, I guess I would ask this commission, uh, is anyone willing to make a, uh, a motion or a recommendation? I know for, uh, I guess a motion is what I'm looking for. As someone who is uh, part of the uh, committee to make the recommendation, and some of them are here today, I know that uh, uh, I commend you, and um, I hope that uh, this is something that we can keep moving. Mr. Chairman, I would move to remand these ordinances to PNZ with a specific request um, about looking at a fee structure for these permits. Okay. We have a motion by Landeen. Is there a second? Commissioner, excuse me, I was <clears throat> would you repeat the motion? Uh, I would move to remand um, these ordinance drafts to PNZ. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to uh, <clears throat> move this back to planning and zoning and keeping this thing moving. Um, I guess uh, any other discussion by the commission at this time? Seeing none, um, I guess call the roll. Kristen? Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. 
Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Motion carries. Next. Item number two, um, board action. Again, I guess, uh, Commissioner Aarons, this is uh, <clears throat> yours, and I guess uh, maybe uh, I'll go ahead and let you explain it, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Here. Uh, uh, good morning, and thanks, Mr. Chairman. My apologies I was for my tardiness this morning. Um, <laughs> I want to thank the Commission for uh, being willing to uh, consider the resolution here this morning. Um, probably just requires a little bit of explanation, a little bit of background. Um, in 2005, the, uh, this County Commission passed uh, its comprehensive plan. And uh, I don't know if any of the current commissioners, I mean myself and Commissioner Landine and Jibben were not on the commission at that time. I don't know if Commissioner Schmidt or Poppins was. But in 2005, uh, this county commission came up with its comprehensive plan. And specifically, it developed a future land use map. And our county has been relying upon this plan that was developed. Uh, a lot of thought, effort, and input went into it. And more specifically, our citizens have been relying upon uh, the future land use map we have here. In fact, um, it's because of decisions made back in 2005 that we see growth and development happening the way that it does. You know, for example, we've had a tremendous amount of growth and development out at the T exit, and that's a result of the zoning decisions that this county made at the time. Um, furthermore, we've identified other areas of the county as being the most suitable for industrial land use. And why do I point out industrial land use? It's because a proposed prison site uh, is most compatible with an industrial land use. I mean, clearly, uh, the proposed prison is not compatible with residential housing. It's uh, not compatible with agricultural land use, but it is compatible with uh, industrial land use, specifically because those are the areas of the county where we think that other things, in addition to a potential prison, could grow up and develop. For example, you put a prison location in here in Lincoln County, and you're going to have other uh, you're going to have other development that wants to take advantage of the infrastructure that comes along with that. So, for example, and what I'm hearing from the state and from some of these lawmakers right now, is that the prison is a 1.2 billion dollar investment. That's a tremendous amount of money. Uh, for the state of South Dakota. In fact, uh, the one billion dollar mark is the, uh, is the mark in the entire state of South Dakota for uh, development purposes. That's the largest amount of development there's been. Uh, there's a private development up by uh, Lake Preston that's going to just about reach the one billion dollar marker. And that's considered one of the largest dollar amounts for private investment in the entire state. So the reason I point that out is to explain that a $1.2 billion investment is very large and substantial when it comes to the state of South Dakota. Now, what we're hearing from the governor's office and the Department of Corrections is that uh, the state, for the first time in 150 years, wants to put a $1.2 billion development in our county. Well, if you can't, you know, clearly the powers that be have made a decision where they think that Lincoln County is the best place for this development. Well, we as a county commission, I think, have a duty and an obligation uh, to collaborate with the state of South Dakota. And we have to say to ourselves, if the state is going to make a $1.2 billion investment, why don't we work with the state in a collaborative effort to try to drive that uh, tremendous amount of investment to a location in this county where we believe that it's best suited? Now, we're not trying to, uh, at least I'm not, 
derail the state's plan to build a prison or anything like that. I just want to make it a win-win situation, not only for the county, but for the state. Because if the state is going to build it, it needs to work for them because it's a state project, but it also needs to work for the county. And so you need to locate the prison in a location that's consistent with our comprehensive plan. And so, Mr. Chairman, what I'm doing today is I'm just submitting a resolution for this uh, commission to consider where we as a commission would express our sentiment both to the governor as well as to the secretary of uh, corrections where we encourage the state to build this huge prison uh, in an industrial location as determined in 2005 by our comprehensive plan. So, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate there may be an abundance or diversity of thought on this commission with regard to this issue, but I do think it's important that we show some leadership here, uh, that we don't just, the state argues that it may have the authority or power to just locate this where it wants to, but that doesn't mean that we just sit down and shut up and take it. What it means is that we collaborate constructively to try to drive that decision into the best location possible. So, Mr. Chairman, that's why I created this resolution for the Commission's consideration. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions by this Commission for Commissioner Ahrens? Commissioner Ahrens, are you driving this toward any one particular location or area? Well, I am driving it towards where our comprehensive plan uh, does identify it as being industrial in use. Now that is a good question. In the last few days, I have caught wind that representatives of some land in an industrial area want to make their land available to the state of South Dakota. And I've told those people that I'm not going to weigh in on the particular merits of any one individual parcel. But what I certainly am going to do is make that public. And I am going to let people know that there are landowners now here in Lincoln County who want to offer up their land in an industrial area. But because of the potential that we may have to sit as judges in a conditional use permit hearing, that's if the court uh, would agree to that, We'd, we can't take a position on any one particular parcel, but we as a county commission certainly can stand up for our comprehensive plan. Thank you. Any other questions for Commissioner Aaron? Or comments? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, thank you, Joel, for uh, continuously uh, looking at this issue. Um, the board has taken action in supporting, um, to some degree, a lawsuit that, in the essence, of what I believe the state should, at a minimum, have to abide by our comprehensive plan and our other zoning requirements. Um, and that is still in action and in place. And, and I still support that the state in a, doing a, uh, its due diligence with the county's uh, guidance and support of trying to find and develop a, a logical place for them. Um, I'm going to have difficulty supporting this motion today as it's written. But I do appreciate what you're trying to do in encouraging finding a better alternative. I do not think it is, though, our responsibility to do that because, in essence, then that automatically gives, I think, a predetermined approval for what they're doing, and I, I don't support that at this time. So thank you. Any other questions or comments for Commissioner Ernst? Well, Mr. Chairman, I'm just going to tell you, my phone lit up this morning. Um, asking where this new proposal was going to be, if I knew. And uh, the only thing I've heard, it is along some land that is uh, adjacent to the interstate, uh, just north of where our transfer station is. And I, I understand, believe me, we all understand the situation and the emotion can, uh, with it. So. When you look at what that site said, that's about a mile from Worthing. 
And, you know, I think all the residents of Worthing would be shocked to find that this commission would, in essence, tacit say, well, we go along with this new site without contacting them. Lord knows the state never contacted anybody. They didn't contact any of the landowners that are affected by this prison. And we've been, and, and you've all been uh, diligently trying to get some voice in this thing. Now, don't shoot the messenger here. But yesterday, Commissioner Poppins and I met with the uh, director of the DOT, Joel Junt on a matter dealing with an interchange that the county is involved in. And during the course of that conversation, at or near the end of it, and Commissioner Poppins, you can validate this, uh, Commissioner Junt asked us on where, uh, how, much, how much road development he would have to do on this new site. Okay. That's all I can tell you. I mean, that isn't divulging anything. He asked the question, which in my mind says that has the state made it all up? Are they done? Are they not going to move? Have they, is it over? Is it all done? And I'm not saying that you shouldn't try to uh, affect anybody. We really can't contact anybody because there's a lawsuit going on and there was no action taken yesterday by the judge. And I don't know when that will finally be done. So I, I, I will not support this as well. Not that I don't understand this thing, but I just think the timing right now is, uh, is not right. And I don't want to have this commission go on record of, an, of supporting something that's going to affect a, a, a community like Worthing of 900 people. That I can't do. Thank you. Any other comments I, or questions? I'm going to have to agree with Commissioner Schmidt. I feel like the intent here is good, certainly, but the industrial areas right now are all located closer to municipalities than the new proposed site. Um, so for that reason, I can't support this as written. Because to me, the state is doing what they're doing to us, telling us where they're putting it. And by driving this without support of a municipality that has an industrial area, um, I can't support it today. Thank you. Thank you. With that, um, I'm going to go ahead and open it up to public input. Again, uh, I will allow 30 minutes, uh, 15 minutes for the proponents, 15 minutes for the opponents. Uh, each speaker, please try to limit yourself to three minutes. So I guess we'll start with the uh, opponents first. Please state your name and address. Mm -hmm. Don Clausen, 47174, 275th Street. I sent a letter to Kelly Wasco suggesting they locate it nearer to Rapid City because I've been in, working at the penitentiary for 32 years, uh, retired in 2011, and I saw people from Rapid City coming to visit. They could only come on weekends if they were working, and one woman was crying in the front lobby because she'd lost her purse. She'd withdrawn all her savings from the bank and had nothing to buy food, nothing to buy lodging, nothing to buy gas to go back home. I got a reply from the secretary that Kelly Wasco had received my letter and appreciated my input. Thank you. Anyone else? Mike Hoffman, Canton, South Dakota. We need some direction. I agree with Mr. Aarons that we need to take a lead on this. It needs to go somewhere. We need to tell them that, yes, we, we've, you guys signed on and agreed to the, the lawsuit, but you're just saying, yes, you need to abide by our laws. Now, participate with us. Get them to come with us. Here, this is how our process works. This is where you should be. I, I think <clears throat> I disagree with the, the not supporting it. I agree 100% with you not supporting the specific location of XYZ family ranch or farm, 
I agree with that. But of signing on and saying that it needs to be in an industrial area is 100% right. I believe you all can do that without signing on to the family farm or wherever this piece of property is. I think you can say, yes, this needs to be in an industrial area. Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents? Good morning, Michelle Jensen, Canton, South Dakota. I'm a little confused. We're saying opponents, so, but we're getting up here and speaking for this. So I guess I would like to voice that, yes, I would be in favor of this resolution for much the similar reasons. I've been coming to these county commission meetings now for- Okay, I will, I, Michelle, I will ask for- <laughs> Okay. Uh, I will ask for proponents here. I okay, so you, you, you want us to wait a minute. Yes, okay. okay. It, any other opponents? That's, uh, I'm sorry if I didn't make that clear. Okay, seeing none, I'll go ahead and I'll ask for uh, proponents at this time. Go ahead, Michelle. Michelle, you're on board. <laughs> It's I should have just stayed up here. Okay, <laughs> okay. So I've been coming to these county commission meetings now for over a year. Um, and I've, I've watched as I've been in the meetings various different issues from, you know, event centers up around Lake Alvin and various different businesses and various different CAFOs and all of this. And it seems like the one common theme is this comprehensive plan. It seems like the, the ideas behind everything, the reasons you support or deny applications and permits, you rely heavily on this comprehensive plan. So I guess I'm a little confused why you could not support a resolution that asked for the state to follow this comprehensive plan. You know, I think that's, that's all that's saying. I think that's what the residents out there are saying, where it's going to completely changed the rules that the rest of us have been following for how long? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had to follow these rules. We looked at this comprehensive plan when we bought our property. We followed the rules for stuff we've done in our businesses up in Harrisburg, that's in Lincoln County. So I, I guess I'm a little bit confused and I would ask for the support of this commission. All, all we're doing is asking to follow the rules that the rest of us have all been following. Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents? <laughs> Jeff Spikesma, 27671 South Dakota Highway 11. Um, along with Michelle, I'm very confused with your guys' position today, especially you, Mr. Schmidt, saying that we can't propose to the state to put a prison in an industrial area. The town of Worthing is very, very aware that they're in an industrial area. They've seen our comprehensive plan, and we have not, Joel has not, proposed an exact location. We're asking, proposing, that you recommend to the state that it goes according to our comprehensive plan. By not supporting him today, you're telling the state you can put it wherever you want. Why? You guys work for us, you're elected for us, and you're supposed to abide by our comprehensive plan. I'm gonna say this bluntly, do your job. That's what we expect of you guys. Thank you. Any other proponents? Mm -hmm. Linda Montgomery, Fairview, South Dakota. I agree with your proposal. I'd like a vote to support that. What I read in the, I was not able to attend the hearing yesterday, but what I read in the paper this morning was absolutely disgusting. That the state feels that they can just come in and do whatever they want and that they do not have to follow a plan that you all have set in order. People here have been supporting and have been you know, turned down because their property, property didn't follow a com the comprehensive plan. Please, stand for us. This is not, we're going to serve the queen. 
I'm sorry, it's not. That's what it's coming down to. We want you to stand for us. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? <clears throat> okay, no one else? I guess then I'll close, um, I guess, uh, input from the, uh, here in the building. So with that being said, I guess uh, commissioners, uh, I'm to that point where I need a motion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would move for the commission's uh, consideration um, approval of the uh, resolution as uh, drafted and handed out to the, each of the commissioners here this morning. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll offer the motion for uh, of second for discussion, although I still maintain that at this point I cannot support the motion. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we have a motion by Aaron's, a second by Poppins. Um, <clears throat> any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioner Poppins, thank you for uh, allowing this to have a vote today. I think it's important. <clears throat> thank you for that courtesy. Um, just a few things I want to say based upon what I heard this morning. Um, you know, especially with regard to what Commissioner Schmidt was saying. Commissioner Schmidt, I, I appreciate you've taken the lead on meeting with Commissioner Junt and that he's asking some questions about uh, not only the 85th Street interchange, but also about uh, any kind of improvements that would need to be made in the county for the possible prison site. I appreciate you and Commissioner Poppins doing that. Uh, with regard to some of these infrastructure issues, and that's something I really want to discuss, is there's going to be a tremendous amount of infrastructure uh, built to support a 1,500 prison bed, uh, prison bed facility. And so if we're going to build that, uh, nobody in their wildest dreams ever thought that the intersection of, uh, what is it, 278th and 477th, is that what it is? Nobody ever thought that intersection in their wildest dreams would be where we would put not only a facility like this, but all the other potential growth and development that could grow up around it. We just never intended for that to happen. Now, I understand the state's argument about the fact that, you know, they argue they can just build it where they want to. Okay, fine. But that may be, according to them, the outer limits uh, of their powers and authorities. But really, when we're talking about public policy making and making laws, we don't just do things because uh, you can. You don't just exercise power for the, for the sake of exercising power. It, you develop good policy and good laws and ordinances here in South Dakota because it's what works for the public and it's what's in the best interest. Now, we can have an honest and good faith debate over what's in the best interest, but there is no debate. There can be no argument that the currently proposed site uh, is the best location or the co or works with the comprehensive plan or or was what anybody would have ever dreamt was a good location to build a 1.2 billion dollar facility and so I, I think my point is is look there's going to be more growth and development around this potential prison site we ought to locate it and this is my second point in a site that's been zoned in or excuse me, contemplated or uh, designated as a future land use of being industrial. Uh, I respect the people of Worthington, Worthing. This is not uh, some kind of slight against them uh, just because there's an industrial uh, designation on the comprehensive plan next to them. I've been a part of the Sioux Metro Growth Alliance. I've been in meetings where the people of Worthing are asking, or their designees, have asked for growth and development to occur out there, okay? I've been in these meetings with these people. They, and they know that growth and development is going to come out there, and they also are asking for that growth and development to come out there. Now, I'm not suggesting the people Worthington, Worthing have asked for the prison, don't get me wrong, but I have been in these meetings where they're asking for commercial growth and development to occur. You know, there were a lot of discussions many years ago about Amazon wanting to locate down there. 
about CJ Foods wanting to locate down there. Those are very big. That, that's warehousing. Uh, that's potential manufacturing. Uh, those are big, big businesses that there were serious discussions about those kinds of big investments and big facilities being located down there. So let's just put this to rest. Everybody, the comprehensive plan is well read and well known by city managers and city leaders. They know, and this is the map right here, it's all up and down the interstate, the commercial growth and development uh, corridors. Everybody knows they're on notice that this kind of growth and development could occur. Now, I don't subscribe to the same kind of fatalism that maybe Commissioner Schmidt does, that people are just going to say hell no in these areas. Okay? These are discussions that need to happen. And I think we as a county commission have a duty to work in a collaborative uh, way with the state of South Dakota to guide growth and development where it's going to work best for everyone. And uh, just putting it in the middle of a cornfield, may th that may have been a very economic decision, but it probably wasn't a very just or well thought out decision. So I think we have to defend our comprehensive plan. And just lastly, Mr. Chairman, what I want to say is this commission routinely will tell uh, an individual citizen, you can't put uh, an outhouse, you can't put an outbuilding, you can't put a garage in a certain place on your property. But then when the state comes along and wants to put a $1.2 billion behemoth in the middle of a place it was never designed for, well, we just fall over then. We just fall over dead and we say to ourselves, oh my lord, we can't do anything about it. So we have no problem telling the little guy what to do. But then when the big guy, i.e. the state, comes along, well, then we just roll over for them. And I'm, I'm sorry, I just don't subscribe to that. And I do respect each of the commissioners' individual thoughts on this, and, uh, and I appreciate where they're coming from. But at the same time, uh, I just want to express where I'm coming from. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other discussion amongst this commission? I, I just feel like the way this is written, I mean, what about the municipal collaboration? We are, we, this resolution pushes this to the city. I mean, there's no city here today saying, pick me. So I feel like we're doing the exact same thing that the state is doing in past in, in proposing this resolution. We're cramming it down somebody's throat or trying to. And while I appreciate the intent behind this, because I do, it's just going to lead to the exact same issue. If it gets pushed to an industrial district, does the city want it? I don't know. I mean, that's where I'm at, I guess. So I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ahrens, you're very well spoken. Um, I think that uh, many of the things that uh, you said, I mean, um, I agree with to a certain degree. Um, using the idea that it's a the, the gigantic figure that uh, um, has been proposed, the one that uh, I have always heard it was uh, 701 million. Also, I want to share other things with you. I know that uh, I'm not going to be popular here. I'm not. Uh, you know, you can do what you want. But I talked to any number of state legislators this past weekend, and one of the questions that you ask is you ask two questions from my vantage point, are you guys going to do something about a pipeline? Are you going to, you know, what are you going to do about a pipeline? That's, that's a big issue. Are you going to, and what, what about the prison? And what you hear from them is they feel this is over. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to, to purse the bubble, but I mean, these are, I'm not going to name names, but they just said, well, why are you doing this? Because this is over. Don't shoot the messenger. Now, would I like to see someplace else, personally? You asked me that question. Kelly asked me that question. Yeah. <laughs> I'd probably be in the same spot you are, but I'm a judge sitting up here. I'm looking at realistic things. And if we look at this thing, while this is a very simple little document, it sends a strong message to that the, we are involving the commission in a, a state decision. Do I like to have that uh, local control is going to be coming up here talking in a minute? 
But I still believe that if we're going to do this, as Commissioner Landine says, we're creating unintended consequences that we haven't thought about yet this morning. So, and I, mean, I still am going to not support this measure. Thank you. Sure. Um, just to clarify my thought on this is we have a comprehensive plan. I think the state as well as any individual or business that wants to come into our county should abide by it. Um, this resolution, unfortunately, gives a little bit too much support to approving something uh, just because it goes into an industrial area. Uh, there's a lot of criteria that we actually, I, you know, to this date have not been presented with. I can't tell you right now if I'd want to see this in an industrial area just because it's an industrial area because I haven't seen what they have are presenting because it hasn't been presented, at least to myself. I don't know if Commissioner Aarons has seen it, uh, what, you know, what their infrastructure, what their sewer, what any of those things are. Until I see that, I can't say that, yep, I would love to see this in an industrial area. And that's what it comes down to because I still believe by the uh, existence of our comprehensive plan and our support of our uh, actions over the years since the 2005 enactment of it, um, a, a state agency, state government shouldn't be excluded from having to follow the rules. Now, I've served as a com county commissioner for enough years to know, unfortunately, we get the authority based on what the state legislature gives us, which is very little. We sit on a as a jury on planning and zoning, or judge and jury on a planning and zoning, only by the statute and power that they give us. They have got legislation and language out there that says the state can do whatever they want. So if we're frustrated with this, the people that we need to talk to is our legislators. And that's uh, on this eminent domain, all of these issues and powers that the state sets, that's where they get set at. We try to enact based on what the, the laws are written. So I believe we have as much power based on the fact that we have our comprehensive plan in effect. Um, this resolution, I think, unfortunately, I feel gives support to the state to put it into an industrial area. And I can't do that because I haven't seen what they're pr proposing. Um, I do support what Joel is trying to do and bring an attention that please state, talk to us before you do this. Let's work this out, absolutely. Um, but unfortunately at this time I cannot support it, Joel. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Um, our, our representatives um, from Kevin Jensen and Jim Bolin and Carla. and um, Carl, Lems. Lems. Carl Lems and Ernie Otten and, and, and Herman Otten and all of these people are in this and I have not heard word one from any of them. And I know that all of, I, I'm, I haven't, I haven't, I don't know, maybe, I, Carla has put a resolution in. She come up, but I mean, what I'm saying is, have they, uh, have they listened to your pleas? Have they listened to you? Have, they're the ones that go to the state. They're the ones that are sitting in judgment right now. They've listened far better so. than you have. I am. I. I won't. Uh, I won't respond to that, sir. I have not heard from any of them uh, on this issue. So, uh, although we have contacted them, but all right. Thank you. If there's no further discussion, call I guess we question, can Mr. call Chair. the question. Call Kristen, the question. Commissioner Aaron's yes. Commissioner Landine no. Commissioner Poppins no. Commissioner Schmidt no. Commissioner Gibbon. Yes. Motion failed. Okay. Item number three. Thank you. Uh, board discussion and uh, possible action regarding the um, uh, partial uh, disposition of county owned and real estate. Uh, Steve, I guess that's yours. So approximately uh, three and a half years ago, we uh, purchased about 155 acres in the city of T for a proposed justice center. Um, and then before it was uh, moved to uh, its current site uh, uh, here just outside of Canton, uh, we have an offer um, at just shy of uh, 1.8 million for 44 acres at the north end of that 155 acres. Um, 
can you repeat that again, the amount and the location for those sure. that might have a question here uh, in the audience? Sure. So the parcel is uh, number 240.28.76.1000. And it is the uh, north 44 acres of the 155-acre site for that parcel. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, Mr. Asmussen, has that been split out? No. It's uh, the offer. It's for the entire parcel right now. It has not been subdivided. So it's via exhibit as far as how they uh, identified it. So I don't know if they can pull it up on... That answer your question? It does. Oh. Any other questions here for Steve? Thanks. We'll pull it up and show you. <clears throat> I'm going to pull the offer up actually as well. There it is. So the total amount is one million seven hundred ninety-five thousand three hundred and sixty-five, which makes uh, comes out to about forty thousand five hundred per acre. And on the exhibit, this Say shows you again, the. Steve. I'm Say sorry. Again. I didn't hear you. Per acre, you didn't hear that. Yeah, forty thousand five hundred per acre, and the offer is for uh, forty-four point three three acres. Uh, and according to this exhibit A, which is right here. So it's the north portion. There's an existing uh, unrelated parcel in between at the uh, northwest corner. And then the wetland area to the south, which is be approximately 110 acres, um, can be used for drainage for Nine Mile Creek, of which the county has a study on that as well. Okay. Any other questions by this commission? All right. Um, that being said, uh, public input. Scott Montgomery Fairview. I just got one question. Uh, I thought surplus property had to come up for high bids. Just, just a question. Um, Steve, can you answer his question in regard to that? Or Drew, or Drew can. Okay. By statute, there's two methods that uh, county can dispose of surplus property. One is by public auction. One is also through a broker. So it's to ensure that there's the highest bid uh, to the county and to the to the citizens. So those are the two methods that can be utilized. Okay. Thank you. Did everyone hear that? The I don't know. Some of you are shaking your head. Did every Drew, you repeat that again. I know there's some people here that I think didn't hear that. And, and Sorry. There are two methods that uh, surplus property can be disposed of, uh, exclusively land, I guess. It would, one would be through the public auction uh, process. The other one would be through the broker process, and that's to ensure that the highest and best value for the property is insured for the county. Okay. Thank you. For any other public input? Okay, no other public input. Uh, any questions by this commission? If not, do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, um, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I would move to um, partially dispose of the forty-four point three three acres that is uh, noted in the exhibit here today. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. Okay, a motion by Landine, a second by Poppins. Any discussion? I think it's a, a benefit to the county to get it back on the tax roll um, and at a uh, uh, above what the uh, purchase price was three and a half years ago. So, plus we retain the lower area for uh, maintaining and controlling flooding along Nine Mile Creek. It's a win-win. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with. Commissioner Poppins on that, get it back on the tax rule. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I agree with Commissioner Poppins as well. Uh, this will be good for economic development. 
it'll be good for publicly owned land to be moved back into private hands so that we can have private economic development and private investment and uh, and then start collecting some property taxes off of it and hopefully they do some good things up there in T, T with this. Okay, thank you. That being said, go ahead, let's uh, call the roll, please. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, I would just offer to Commissioner Poppins a thank you for shepherding this thing uh, through. Um, this was controversial when we first purchased this property, Commissioner Poppins, if you recall. And uh, it was, uh, I think we came out fairly well. I agree. All right, that being said, uh, item number four, board action to approve a resolution of necessity to acquire um, real property necessity for opening and constructing highway. I know that's me. I Go ahead, and I would like uh, Drew to comment on that. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Again, uh, this is being brought back in front of the commission based upon statute. Uh, I know there may be questions why this is being brought back when there was a tie vote last, uh, be two weeks ago. Uh, under statute, if the majority of the board is not present and there's a tie vote under 7818, it needs to come back before the next meeting. Uh, again, this is the resolution of necessity that was previously voted on. I, I can't remember the exact date. Uh, now the property has been surveyed and designated eight lo H lots. Um, the landowners gave permission for the survey to take place. Um, so would ask your consideration um, for um, either approval or disapproval of this resolution of necessity. Any questions for Mr. DeGroote by this commission? Uh, Mr. DeGroote, uh, there was some public comment made at the last meeting, and I've received some comments about this, about this issue of whether when a county wants to use uh, eminent domain to take land for a courthouse versus for a road. And here, you're creating a road to a courthouse. Uh, I assume state's attorney's position is this is acceptable according to the statute? Yeah, and I was present when I think it was Mr. Montgomery had raised this issue. Um, from a legal perspective, it would be for the purposes of the road and, and not the courthouse. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, Mr. DeGroote, it's also for a utility easement, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, I do believe that the city of Canton has uh, given the opinion that the, the best route from a utilities perspective would be on that, that uh, through that land. And I, I believe that was the most cost-effective route for the utilities? Correct. Okay. Uh, a substantial uh, cost savings, yes. Thank you. Okay, any other? All right, with that being said, I'll open it up for public comment uh, those in favor first I guess then the opponents those disagreeing Scott Montgomery Fairview South Dakota um, I'm not a lawyer so I can't really state that the legalities of this thing, but I just want to read you the last paragraph. I mean, you, this whole statute is put in the resolution, except the last paragraph. The last paragraph says, nothing in this section may be construed as authorizing county commissioners to condemn public property for county courthouse or jail site until a majority of the voters of a county have voted in favor of the erection of a courthouse or jail. I mean, that's pretty black and white. Maybe, maybe we can skate by the law legally. Is it right? No. I want to know how many of you commissioners have had people come to you and supporting this idea of taking this man's land. Any of you? Have any of you come? I mean, you're supposed to be a representative of government. Uh, I think most of the people are against this. And so, I, in fact, I'm not sure there's anybody for it. So, who are you representing? Um, this is the third time I brought this statute before you. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I've paid real close attention to this. The, the name changes from Justice Center to Courthouse, however we conveniently want to use it. But uh, 
The architect clearly stated West Road, which is a road going north there, was adequate for entrance in and out of this place. Clearly stated that. I think it puts another fly in the mess here when you're going to take this guy's land when you already have adequate access as far as legalities. It was stated you have adequate access. So why in the world do you think you need to take this guy's land? I'm, I'm, a, I'm kind of lost here. Is it some pride thing or we said we're going to do it and we're going to do it? It makes no sense to me at all. I mean, if this place wasn't adequate to build on, maybe we shouldn't have bought it in the first place. I mean, you paid a price of $62,500 an acre for one section of 20 acres. That wasn't a big deal. 62.5, that's no problem. Maybe if they were offering 62.5 for the prison, there'd be a prison someplace else. I mean, when the county can afford it, the state surely ought to be able to afford it. I know I'm just uh, absolutely disgusted that, that, that you guys don't represent the people of this county. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Doug McKinney, Canton. It's my land you're trying to take. Not once did any of you reach out and touch to us, especially you, Mr. Gibbons. You're a representative for us. That's not very good. And we had two meetings with Poppins and Golden. They didn't last very long. They failed to negotiate. We didn't fail to negotiate. You people failed to negotiate with us. Thank you. Any other public comment? Good morning, Commissioners. Um, I'm Sandy Lundstrom. I live at 215 West 4th Street here in Canton. I am the mayor of the city of Canton. I'm here to thank you for all your hard work to ensure that the courthouse extension expansion remains in Canton. We are appreciative of that. Um, we support the Justice Center and we support the location you have chosen for this center. Um, and as far as the Fifth Street or West Road, I'm going to let Paul say that. Yeah. Paul Garber's 1016 Angel Lane. Um, our jurisdiction stops at West Road and we are well aware that we need to work with you guys as far as West Road, but that's where our jurisdiction stops. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Linda Montgomery, Fairview, South Dakota. Um, you know, it, it, it seems, um, I don't know, strange that right before we do this, you sell that land in tea. I know you, you know, I just found it funny. But I still don't approve taking someone's land. Scott read the last paragraph of that whole thing that you guys have been today presenting us with that, yes, we can take land. This is a project that you did not take to the people for a vote. And then, even with that, then you want to take someone's land. This is wrong. We the people, I, one of the citizens of this county, do not agree with this amount of spending that I have not voted on, that I didn't get a chance to vote on building it, where it's at, and how much you're going to pay for it. And I certainly did not vote on we can take other people's land, a citizen's land, for a driveway. I know utilities, fine. You said, you know, I mean, maybe you can get an easement. But, a, you know, a driveway? To take someone's land who they've had. Land is precious. It's the one thing we have, and you're going to take it. To me, this is just not right, and I oppose this. Okay, thank you. Any other public comment? Okay. Seeing none, I guess, uh, commissioners? Oh, Mr. Chair, where we can I have a question. Yes. 
Um, <clears throat> for the gentleman, sir, would you, you mentioned the fact um, we failed to negotiate, and I'm not going to belabor that. But I have to ask this question, and maybe it's a totally stupid thing, but it wouldn't be the first thing that I've said that's stupid. Um, is negotiation still possible? I mean, I don't think I don't think anybody wants to take anybody's land. I mean, really? Does it? Do you, do you think we? Don't, do you, yeah. Mr. Chairman, can he come up to the microphone, please? Yeah, please come up. Doug. I'm just talking, sir. Talk, we're, yeah. This is serious yeah. business yeah. right now. We had two meetings with Poppins and Golden. And I'll tell you right now, the very first meeting, the very first sentence out of Poppins' mouth was, if you don't sell us our land, we're going to use eminent domain. <laughs> we have three people that heard you say that, Mike. Absolutely not. Yes, sure. We did. I will argue yeah. that on a Bible that never yeah, came out of people. my mouth. There's three people here today that who'd you say sir, that? Sir, can I ask There's you a question? Well, yeah. Yeah. Hang on, let's, hang on, sir. I'm just talking. Who said what? I don't care. Yeah. All I want to know is, this commission doesn't want to get embroiled in that kind of stuff. Is it possible to still negotiate? We talked to our lawyer, and we have to get back to you. I mean, and we wait a few people for long, how long? So what was the last amount that you offered for that property to the county? Yeah. I'm not going to say that in public because everything you did was behind that closed door. Yeah. And, and that's okay. Yeah. yeah. That's okay, sir. I, I and don't... you're doing the exact same thing to us that the state is doing to these people over here with the pen. Yeah. Are that's, negotiations that's still possible? I said we have to talk to our lawyer. When could you notify us if that's possible? Talk to her lawyer and find out. Could you do it within a week, two weeks, month? Probably a couple weeks. Okay. All right. I wasn't here prior. Yeah. I can be in touch with your attorney and, and we can move forward with discussions. Um, I was not here prior. Well, and, we're talking to our own attorney. Or, no, I mean, yeah, and I know that. I'm just saying, please have him reach out to me and, and we can hopefully schedule something. Mr. Chair, I would I would move that we table this uh, motion until we've heard back from the parties about whether further negotiations are possible. Okay, thank you. We have a motion. Can do we have a second? Um, Mr. I've, I've, Chair, I don't think okay. people have finished. Okay, oh, you're okay. right. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay, excuse. Go me. ahead, Ernie. <clears throat> Ernest Rottmeyer Worthy. Do you not have access for utilities in a driveway from the West Street? Yes, yes, they do. That's a question. Just answer yes or no. Don't do all this BS stories. Do you not have access without stealing his property? If you have access, then why are you trying to steal his property? And why did you buy that property? Why did you buy it? Why did you make an agreement to buy it if you didn't have access? And from my understanding, unless I'm wrong, you have access, and you can access it from the east, from that street, and you can take utilities there, and you can service your area. And if that's the case, then I don't believe that anything you're doing here to try to steal his property is right. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes. We're, Ernie, we're not stealing anybody's property. We're not doing that. I understand. I'm not going to argue with you public, but I just want to put this down. You've got to remember, there's 70 some thousand people in this county. They don't just live here. They live up north. There's $54 million of taxpayer money that's going to be built in the thing that's going to last in this county for 30, 40, 50, 70, I don't know how many years, but years to come. And do you really, really want to put that off of a township gravel road? Should you put, should you put that? I'm not taking, I'm not stealing anything. I'm just trying to say, this is going to be a footprint and a legacy for us, for the future. And I'm sorry that this thing got fouled up. And that's why when we're done with this uh, discussion, I'm going to move to wait to hear from the landowner to see if negotiations are possible.
Mr. Chairman, I yes. have a question. Okay. Uh, and Go I don't ahead. know if anybody can help answer this. I know we've got the mayor and one of the city councilors here. Uh, I keep hearing the term township road thrown around. Um, is th so as I understand it, from Highway 18 going north, the road is paved, correct? Blacktop. Correct. The township Blacktop. Owns, the township owns the west half. City go, go ahead and come up and uh, speak at the mic and I just yeah, want to make Ernie, sure we can you sit down I just want to make sure we've got a common <laughs> yes, set of facts that we're operating off of here West Road going either south or north of 18 right now the township owns the west half of that road and the city owns the east half okay thank and, you and and it's pay, paved blacktop going from highway 18 past the where the current uh, driveway is right correct so there's no gravel the gravel road starts after further north right correct okay I, I just I keep hearing the term township gravel road I mean there's township gravel roads where this new prison is going to be for crying out loud I mean I just want to know is it a paved road or is it a gravel road right yeah so thank you I appreciate that okay thank you Hi, Melissa Carlson, 277 278 Avenue. I don't know all the details of the driveway permit, but it seems my understanding is that there is other access available, and this this route probably doesn't make sense. But a point I wanted to make is this seems like it's going to be a waterfall effect and you know, regarding the prison, that once we start talking about roads and access to the prison, that you're probably going to be doing the same thing to a lot of different landowners taking their land, you know, we'll have to go through permits, figure out how they're going to get access to the prison in the middle of nowhere on all gravel roads out there. So I just wanted to, you know, have you think about this to future, um, uh, you know, approvals that this may be a waterfall effect and it doesn't, it doesn't seem like a good deal to me. Okay, thank you. I guess, um, we can go ahead and move on here. We do have a motion on the motion table. Motion to table this until we have heard back from the landowner if neg further negotiations are possible. Okay. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second that, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make some comments, too. Okay. okay. Uh, Discussion? Power to take land is very powerful. It is allowed. It's allowed under both the U.S. Constitution, South Dakota Constitution. You have to offer just compensation. Uh, there's also some statutes that further clarify how that process is supposed to work. Um, incredible deference is given by our courts once a county commission passes a certificate of necessity, meaning that unless there's fraud, abuse, or bad faith, it's going to happen. So the power rests with the five folks up at here as elected officials to make the decision because you aren't going to overturn it in court. And I don't think anything, you, you're going to prove any bad faith, fraud, or abuse here. Um, I think each of the commissioners takes it pretty seriously. But here we are pulling the same stunt that the state of South Dakota wants to pull with this prison. We're sitting here just wanting to take the land. Now I get it. Let's not be melodramatic about it either, though. It's a driveway intended for the purpose of the public to be able to access the new courthouse. I get that part. It's fine. On the surface, it sounds like a very harmless, benign issue. Okay? You create a nice driveway coming off of Highway 18 to connect the citizens to their new courthouse. I get that. There probably is even an argument made that for safety and security purposes, you probably even need two driveways. You know, that's my guess uh, when you're talking about a public uh, facility like this. Uh, there already is one driveway access. Uh, it is not a township gravel road. It is off of a paved road. Uh, now, whether that paved road or not would be sufficient to handle the, the level of traffic that we expect in and out of the courthouse. I don't know. That's really not my issue today. My issue today is whether it's appropriate to use eminent domain to take this, uh, the McKinney's land. 
the, that's the big issue for me today that I'm concerned about. And what I'm, and I appreciate, I respectfully disagree with the state's attorney's office. I appreciate all their work on this though. But uh, we wouldn't be building that driveway for a road unless the courthouse was gonna be there. So in my mind, according to that statute, we're taking it for a courthouse. I mean, yes, we're not going to physically build the courthouse on the driveway. But the only reason we're building the driveway is because of the courthouse. It's an extension of the two. I mean, but for the building of the courthouse, we would not be taking the driveway. It's not as if we're creating a new road, you know, like we're going to take a farmer's, uh, uh, cut a path through a farmer's section of land so that we can get to a recreational area at the river, for example. Be a perfectly legitimate use eminent domain, I think. In this instance, we're only building a driveway because of the courthouse. And so I think in this instance, we have to trust the judgment of the voters. And I know a lot of elected officials just despise wanting to put decisions in the hands of voters because they don't trust people. But I think in this instance, the statute, to me, the way that I read it is very clear, is that when it's for the purpose of a courthouse, you just have to put it into the hands of the voters and let them make the decision. I know that the conven again, it's a convenient economical shortcut that the county commission can take. Just like the state wanted to make a very convenient economical decision to take some land that they had already owned. It's just government replicating one disaster and one mistake right after another. Don't get me wrong. I have no ill will. I, I take no issue with fellow county commissioners who want to put the driveway there. Like I said, my argument isn't the driveway. My argument is the exercise of government power. That is the theme, apparently, of today's commission meeting uh, in many different avenues. And so that's my issue. I, I don't think these people, uh, fellow commissioners, are wrong for wanting to have a driveway off Highway 18. I mean, that's not a big deal. The, the bigger deal is using the power of government uh, against an average citizen. And, and in this instance, I think there's a statute there that protects those people. So for those reasons, I, I can't support the ultimate issue of taking the land. But um, I, like Commissioner Schmidt, think that there is some, there's more negotiating to be had. The courthouse, it's going to be another, what, 12 to 18 months. We have plenty of time before we need to acquire the land. I appreciate what Commissioner Poppins did and what our former state's attorney did, Mr. Golden, of trying to negotiate a resolution. I just think it'd be important to do a little more talking, a little more collaboration um, between the county and, uh, and the landowners uh, to try to get this thing figured out uh, before, we, before we proceed with such a drastic uh, measure. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, I have Mr. Chairman? Yes. Can I ask um, council a question, if you could come up? I feel like we already voted on this once, and I know I wasn't at the last meeting because I was stranded in mm. Kansas, but um, didn't we already vote on this? And wasn't that vote unanimous? It was. Uh, I don't believe Commissioner Aarons was present during that um, meeting. Um, it was a 4-0 vote, uh, and like I said, this resolution was to clean up the fact that uh, it has now been surveyed and designated H lots. So we're just one further step in that process. So we've delayed it now for two weeks. We're going to delay it some more if we table this. So I'm not. I'm not on board with tabling this. This project needs to move forward. We have contractors that are waiting to do bid packages on this courthouse, and these decisions need to be made. So I'm asking this commission to approve what you've already approved. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Landine, I uh, probably would have uh, last week, but I didn't realize mm, from, we have a landowner here, and I cannot I cannot say why we would not take, if we've spent all this time already, why we wouldn't take an additional two or three weeks to find out whether there was negotiations, which would settle a lot of stuff. 
I mean, we wouldn't be, uh, we, we wouldn't rupture a community and trying to say, did, did you take the land? Did you not take the land? Why didn't you spend the extra time talking? I just think that uh, when you when you when you don't talk, you can't communicate. And maybe we can find a way to communicate and get this thing resolved without of this. And if that means to take additional time, I don't have a problem with that. And I really would like to have us uh, table this until we can get that resolved. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, my comments will be this. Um, this action has already been taken. Uh, this is a clarity motion, uh, exactly what is, uh, what is needed for the courthouse. Um, this by no means prevents any discussion with the property owner moving forward. Uh, until the date of the court, even to the date of the court hearing, you can still negotiate, absolutely. But in, in response to uh, Commissioner Landine, this process for the courthouse is in motion, and some clarity has to be defined as to exactly um, how that approach is going to be for the new courthouse. Uh, I will tell you that in trying to find a spot in Canton or the vicinity of Canton to build this courthouse, is not an easy, has not been, nor would it be an easy task. Uh, nor would I have supported this site if some means was not access to Highway 18, because I do believe, do not believe that this is a, an adequate site without that access. So if there's a, a decision not to do an access to Highway 18, I would say we need to go back to the drawing board and start the process over. And I will tell you that trying to find a willing seller in Canton for adequate site Good luck, and I, I have, I've taken my time, and I will not participate in that. Um, I caught uh, uh, a, um, a lot of no's, very few yeses, and the yeses always had ex even more stipulations on it. So I would encourage anybody else, if they've got a site, uh, we've got representatives from the city of Canton, uh, if they have alternatives, uh, more power to it. But uh, Mr. Nelson and myself, um, and other people scoured the, uh, the property logs of, of in and around Canton. Trying to find a spot is not easy. Um, pre the property that we just uh, accepted an offer on was a parcel that was for sale. Trying to find a willing buyer and a willing seller for a, a governmental property such as this is rare in a community like this because not a large parcels that are uh, have the ability to have infrastructure either currently on it or brought to it exists. So I do not support delaying it. This is simply a clarity motion for something we've already taken and it does not prevent and I encourage uh, if Mr. McKinney's would rather negotiate with somebody else, gladly step down in that negotiation and have somebody else try to reach to uh, uh, come to an agreement on that property. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I would ask you to call the question on delaying this uh, issue until we can uh, find out or that further negotiations are possible. I don't see a problem with that. Okay. We had a yep. motion by Schmidt and a second by Aarons, correct? Correct. All right. So I'll call the roll, please. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Landine? No. Commissioner Poppins? No. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. The motion carried. Carried. It's three tables. Okay. Is tabled, correct. All right. Moving on. Item number. And when, are, and when are we going to bring that back on, Mr. Chairman? Yes. When will we be bringing that motion back on for hearing? Uh, my understanding. Well, we I, I don't know. I, if we have a two two a weeks or a week or so, can we can we look at that by that time, Mr. McKinney? We have a okay meeting like two, uh, next two weeks. Week? Two weeks. Uh, two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Two weeks. Two weeks. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Floyd. If I may, or excuse me. If because that was tabled, you'll have to have a motion to take it off the table in the future, so you can't set a definitive date at this time. So there'll have to be a motion to take it off the table. Okay. Okay. So do we need that motion now, Drew, or in the future? In the future. Oh, in the future. All right. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm asking that that be put on the next agenda for next week. Yes, it will be. That'll be in two weeks from today. Thank you. All right. Um, 
on number five, Highway Shop. I believe Terry's here. Good morning, Commissioners. Terry Floyd, Lincoln County Highway Superintendent. Um, we've been working with uh, Brad Dietzenbach um, with Vanderwall Architect on uh, getting some office space drawn up out at the uh, the highway shop. And um, I have him here this morning to, for a presentation. And I'll let him come up here and uh, present this. Everything should be right there. You just have to scroll down. Sounds good. Good morning. Good morning. What you have before you is basically a program summary of existing and what the proposed would be for the office addition. Um, it was brought to my attention, we need to accommodate some growth needs of their staff in the near future here, and by doing that, take into account future growth. So running through this briefly, the existing office space is 705 square feet, a reception area with one bathroom and two offices. We are proposing two bids on the expansion and remodel, one being a base bid, which would accommodate their needs plus, and that base bid would increase the square footage to 2,326 square feet with reception area or work area for the reception person, two bathrooms, three offices, an open office space that would accommodate four workstations and a conference room and a storage room. The base bid estimate for that would be $385,000. The alternate bid would increase the square footage to 2,559 square feet. Um, it would then, we would be adding to that a larger open office area, which would accommodate six workstations instead of four, otherwise everything else is pretty much the same as the base bid. And that would be an estimated cost of 431,982 approximately. Um, construction of the addition would replicate the existing construction means and methods that are out there right now. And briefly, can I zoom out of this a little bit? So here's the existing staff space that you currently have with the two offices. And here is the base bid. These areas would remain as is. The existing office would get reconfigured by adding another bathroom, recreating the reception area with a work area so that it functions better. We would add a conference room, three private offices, an open office area for four additional employees for workstations, and then a storage area in the middle, all linked together with the existing building. The alternate option we are basically increasing the open office space from four to six workstations here. I would anticipate if we move forward with this, it'd be, out, be going out to bid in March, sometime in March, and uh, construction starting in April, weather pending. And I would anticipate, based off experience, you're looking at maybe six months construction completion and move in. So I'd put it somewhere in towards the fall, early fall. Any questions at this time for the presenter? And Terry, is there any, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, yes. other than the two additional seats, is there any other advantage uh, access connecting mm -hmm. the existing building um, of doing that, to adding the two uh, extra space. Uh, ex can you explain that a little bit? Well, is there, I don't see any additional entrances or access points that are created to to, to the external to no. the existing. No, so basically, so it's strictly so, two additional. So basically, this here right now, if you look up on the screen up there, yeah, this is that north vestibule where you come in. Yep. So basically, you're going to be coming in that entrance, and then we'll be taking and cutting out a wall, which is this here is the main wall right now. And that's how we would access this part. So we'll have a doorway here coming around, and then there would be another doorway that goes directly into the training break room that is there. But all there would be no exterior office entrances from this addition. 
everything will still be on the main. So the, main so the exterior is, matches it. It's metal or yes. Yeah, it, we would use the same materials. Uh, scroll down here. So essentially, it would be the same metal panel materials mm -hmm. to match the existing. Can you go back up to the layout, please? I Thank was you. just going to ask the same question. Yeah. Uh, just there's no emergency exit or anything created in there. Not required by code. You have enough emergency exits. You got travel distance. You have a sprinkler system. So there's nothing by code that requires you to add another egress door with this addition. Any other questions for the presenters here? Terry, who's going to occupy those offices besides yourself, of course? So, so currently, um, this big one, of course, is the big conference room. Uh, the one office will be highway superintendent. The other office will be assistant highway superintendent. And then the third office space will be the uh, county engineer um, once we get that we start recruiting for that and hopefully higher position. And then and in the open workspaces, uh, again, um, for that, one of those one of those desks is going to be taken right away by the operations supervisor. Um, that's where his office will be. And if and in the future, this will this will accommodate growth. Uh, if we want to get some uh, some uh, engineer tech specialists coming in, um, we could have we would have additional office space for them as well, surveyors, land surveyors, or whatnot. So. And then you've got an assistant that's going to be in that uh, blue area. Yes. There. Yeah. So this yeah. here. So right now she is currently over here, and then that space is going to be moved over here to this corner. Um, and then so basically this is an existing restroom here, and then we're going to add another one just to the north of that um, in there. Mm -hmm. Terry, help me by uh, giving me the two estimated uh, costs again. I got 431 for the uh, option two. What was the uh, original? 385. 385. And this is... This is a budgeted item. This is in my budget for, for 2024. I have uh, $425,000 allocated for this project. And you're not asking us today to choose. You're just going to nope. put it out with the alternate bid package. Yeah, so basically what, what I'm looking for is permission to move ahead. Um, grant us a permission to move ahead, get plans done, and then go to bid with this project. Um, and again, uh, talking with Brad here, I think what we'll end up doing is We'll have a base bid um, for, for the, the, the first part, and then we'll do an alternate bid on the second to see what it comes in at um, to see if it's maybe a little cheaper. Um, and if it comes in cheap enough, maybe we can do the, other, the additional part as well. But worst case scenario, um, we'd get the base bid on it or the base part of the project. I'd be very curious, foot stomp, <laughs> if we can get an alternative bid to come in at 425, right? It may it'd be close, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but you, you don't need yeah, I don't know. know. Nowadays you don't know. I don't it's we, very question. That's yeah. right. So that's right. Terry, good luck with that. I'm sure Mr. Chairman's gonna ask for public comment, but I didn't get any act, anybody calling me on this as opposed to the number of people that called me on how many where we're gonna when we're gonna move the uh, county seat, but that was my comments from the previous week. So hopefully the bids come in uh, come in okay. So Okay, mm -hmm. any other questions all right um, that being said um, public comment this time okay seeing none I guess um, are you looking for a motion to move ahead is that it Terry at this he particular wants to time out to bid, Mr. Yeah. Chair. what's that uh, advertising yeah so so I'm looking for action board action to uh, to move forward with uh, the engineering the architect work on this uh, getting plans together and then going to bid um, in two months month and a half two months probably I would offer that motion mr. chair okay I'll second it we have a motion by Smith a second by landing any discussion If not, call the roll, oh, please. Oh, Mr. Chairman, do you yes. have any public comment? Yes, public comment. Well, we did, didn't we? Yeah. Did we? Yeah, yeah well, we did. There was. All right. Yeah, Thank we did. You. Okay. That being said, uh, nobody's jumping the, on this one. Call the roll, please. Commissioner yes. Aarons. Yes. Commissioner Landine. Yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes. Commissioner Schmidt. Yes. Commissioner Gibbon. Yes. Thank you. 
Uh, next item I have uh, is board action to award the 2024 Rural Access Infrastructure Funding uh, or RAFE grants to townships. Uh, I have a document attached here. So this year we received uh, nine uh, grant applications uh, from townships. Um, again, if you look on the, it's in the uh, packet. The green ones are the ones we're going to award. Um, so we'll be awarding one to, uh, Kristen, do you want me to go through all the numbers on these, of these structure numbers for these awards? Yeah, I don't have them. Okay. Me, so. You want you, Yeah, if you have them, yeah. Yeah, okay. So this is our recommendation that came out of uh, the committee um, that reviewed these applications. Uh, first one is going to be Highland Township, structure 42-1497. Dash 2080. Uh, requested money is $32,000. The next structure is going to be Canton Township. Structure 42, 1589, 1417. Requested funding is $206,489. Uh, the next grant will be Delaware Township for structure 42. 0557-2178, and that's an engineering grant for $12,000. The next one is Dayton Township for structure 42-1588-0903 uh, for $176,288. The next one is Pleasant Township for structure 42-0601. 2589, and that's an engineering grant for $12,800. And the last one is Pleasant Township for uh, structure 42-0700-2795, and that is a replacement grant for $11,844. Again, these are, these are structures, uh, or these are uh, uh, recommendations from the, uh, the review committee of applications for this year. So. Okay, thank you. Any questions on any of these? How many townships, Terry, applied? So I'll go back to last year. Last year we had eight townships that submitted five-year plans, and all eight of those townships uh, were granted a some sort of grant last year. So this year I had four of those eight townships applied and are submitted five-year plans, and two new ones submitted five-year plans. So the new ones, so total for this year, we have six townships uh, that submitted five-year plans and applications for this year. So uh, the new ones uh, from this year are Delaware Township and Pleasant Township. Um, they, were, they were the new newcomers this year. Um, and just to refresh you, I don't know how many of you are aware, but with this RAFE funding, um, the townships have to submit a five-year plan by the end of August, I believe it is, every year. And if they don't submit a five-year plan, then they are not eligible for grant funding. So just 10 so far of our uh, townships have submitted any plan at all? Yes. That now is correct. Now the pay on this is 80-20, correct? Yes. Yeah. And, then these, and these uh, awards are 80% uh, of the total cost of those projects so Terry do you want to just mention a lot of times people wonder what does that stand for rural access access infrastructure funding you want to tell them what that is where where that money comes from for us so I believe it was is it uh, 20 20 or 21 um, state legislature set aside funding uh, to assist townships with large structures um, that are over uh, Five feet, six feet, I believe, 60 inches, I believe, I think is what it is. Um, and uh, that was uh, through H, uh, House Bill 1259. Um, the first year was designated. Uh, they had $3 million set aside statewide for all townships to re-inventory all their large structures and then get it into mapping. Uh, and again, Lincoln County, we did that. I had an individual go out. We we went and looked at all the township structures, um, and we put them into the system for the DOT. And I think a year, to, a year or two after that, 
state legislature opted to put more money into this program. Um, so, so that was $25 million that they, they set aside statewide over three years. So we've had two years of that paid out so far. Um, we get roughly, I don't know, 350000 is what Lincoln County gets. And again, that's all based on uh, the number of structures you have in your county, you know, compared to everybody else, and it's all divvied up by a calculation the state uses. So, Terry, I'll mention that I think we were one of the first counties that got our, our study in, if I recall. So, Well, I, I, I know that there was a struggle um, early on yeah. because I think counties were, were kind of scrambling on what to do. Yeah, what to do with it, yes. So. Okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Terry. Is there any uh, public comment on this? Okay. Um, do we have a motion? So moved to approve, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Aaron's. Is there a second? Second. By Schmidt. Is there any discussion by the commission? Okay. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Motion carried. Next item I have, uh, I'm looking for board action to request bids for the 2024 annual supply bids for the highway department. Um, we'll be looking for, uh, and again, uh, the following items, uh, concrete products, crushed concrete, cutting edges, fuel, mag water or mag chloride, uh, plant mixed, asphalt materials, quartzite, riprap, rock salt in the transportation and weed chemicals. So um, we will be um, advertising this uh, the weeks of January 29th and the week of February 5th. Um, bids must be submitted by 4 p.m. February 15th to my office. We'll be opening bids on the 16th at 9 a.m. And again, all this will be posted on the website once the, we get approval to move forward. Okay, any public input on this? If not, do we... Move to approve. Second. We have a motion by Aaron, second by Landine to approve. Any discussion? Not, Kristen. Commissioner Aaron's. Yes. Commissioner Landine. Yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes. Commissioner Schmidt. Yes. Commissioner Gibbon. Yes. Next item I have is uh, board action to approve a recommendation of the highway superintendent to set the 2024 spring load limits. And this is what they'll be. Uh, they'll be on this map here. Are there any changes to the, from previous year? No. No changes from last year. <clears throat> All right. Public input? None? Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Landine, second by Aaron's. Any other discussion? If not, go ahead, call the roll, please. Commissioner Aaron's? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Motion carried. Next item I have is board action to authorize the chair to sign a letter requesting assistance from the South Dakota Carrier Enforcement for the enforcement of load limits in Lincoln County. Basically, this is a, a letter that we have uh, you, the uh, commission sign off on every year, and then uh, we send it out to carry enforcement, um, requesting assistance, their assistance in helping um, uh, patrol enforce our low limits. Okay, any public input? If not, I guess... Uh, Move to approve. The second. Motion by Aaron, second by... Landine, any discussion? If not, call the roll, please. Commissioner Aaron? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Next item I have for you is uh, board action to request bids for a 2024 microsurfacing project for Lincoln County. Um, we'll be doing about 14 miles this year. 
Um, they'll be located on Lincoln County, uh, County Road 106 up north, uh, 271st Street. Um, County Road 110 up north, uh, east of Harrisburg. County Road 123 or Cliff Avenue. And then County Road 113, which is the airport road. Okay. Public so input? We'll be publishing. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Terry. Publishing. Uh, for the advertisement for this, the weeks of February 5th and February 12th, we'll be opening the bids on February 21st at 10.30. Okay. Now public input. If not, do I have a motion? So, so moved. Second. Motion by Aaron, second by Landine. Any discussion? Okay. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Last item I have for you today is uh, um, request board action uh, to request bids for the 2024 Lincoln County surfacing project. Um, so this year we'll be doing uh, about eight and a half miles. Um, basically we're gonna be doing a one inch cold mill and a two inch asphalt um, overlay on these roads. And that's gonna be County Road 110 from Minnesota Avenue or State 115 over to County Road uh, 111 or 469th. We'll be doing County Road 117. We'll be doing two miles of that from the roundabout south down to 110. And then we'll be doing County Road 111 or 469th Street, um, basically north of Harrisburg up to 57th Street. So, okay. And again, on these as well, uh, publishing these February 5th, the weeks of February 5th and February 12th, opening the bids on February 21st at 10.30 a.m. Approximately how many miles is it? But it's almost it's almost nine miles okay. we're doing. Yep. Public input. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Motion by Aaron, second by Landine to approve. Uh, any discussion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Aaron's. Yes. Commissioner Landine. Yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes. Commissioner Schmidt. Yes. Commissioner Gibbon. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, Tracy. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Um, for my next item, I would move to go to executive session under SDCL 125-2, subpar 1. I have a question, Mr. Chair. Okay, go ahead. Um, I understand the request. Um, is there anything else we can do outside executive session before that? Just in, in terms of economy of time? Or um, do both of those need to be done? I think for clarity for both of those, that was would be, on, uh, it would be best to be put in executive session. Okay. Does that answer your question? It does. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair. Any other? I, any would I would suggest, Mr. Chair, that we lump those in with any other executive session so we can get our public comment and commissioner reports and all that stuff out of the way. Okay. Okay, any, any other questions for Tracy? Any other public input? Okay. Uh, again, um, we need a motion, correct, or not? Well, do you want to, if we're going to discuss those things in executive session, do you want to do our opportunity for public comment first okay. and then take commissioner reports? Okay. Public comment on uh, item 12. And also on 13, correct? Is that what you're saying, madam? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if we're going to go into executive session on those, maybe just bump up the public comment and the commissioner reports in front of those. Okay. Which I think was Commissioner Aaron's intent. Okay. That's it, is, it is, Commissioner. Okay. All right. Uh, do, we, uh, do we need a motion to do that or not? No? No. No, we don't have to, do we? Discretion. Okay. All right. Um, I guess at this time, let's um, any opportunity for public comment, those that uh, um, can address non-agenda items that we have uh, have on the agenda for today. So, Good morning, Commission. Jason Van on top, 27745 481st Avenue. I'm here today representing Dayton Township. I uh, spoke with uh, CO2 committee, I think one of the first or second meetings they had. Um, 
basically expressed to them that we're in the process of adopting an ordinance for Dayton Township. And so uh, you may or may not know that, but uh, as of January 17th, we recorded that with the auditor. I have copies here if you wish to have one. Uh, if not, I won't take any more of your time. I just felt the need to be up front and tell you what we did, so. I like copy, Jay. Yeah, do you have a copy for everyone or not? Yes, I do. Okay, right. give us all one then, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One on again. Thank you. All right. So, Jason, I, else, I have Jason? a question. I have one quick question. Yep. Jason, does this this pass what you passed? Is that similar to what uh, the Planning and Zoning Board is going to be evaluating? You know, that came out of the ad hoc committee. Um, I suppose there's bits and pieces of it that probably resembles it. Yeah. Um, our setback ordinance is basically taken from Navigator's Plume study. Okay. Um, other than that, it was kind of what we felt was necessary for the people of Dayton Township. So I guess that's okay. it in a nutshell. It's, it's short and sweet to the point, and I think it's pretty easily understood. So, Okay, Jason, thank you. Jason, I got a question. I see in the fee box there's no fee, and uh, according to Commissioner Landine's motion, we're going to be – we remanded that to consider a fee. What did you all settle on for your fee? I believe it's, well, I think 20000 Okay. It, I don't know if you know this. Your box, your you, your line is still open yet. Yeah, well, I think the one that's recorded is it's yeah. written in there. Um, I didn't have the yeah, yeah, the yeah. one recorded one with yeah. me, so I so, just so printed it was this 20000 Yes. Is that it? Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Jason. Yeah. Any other public comment at this time for non agenda <clears throat> items? Okay, none. Uh, commissioners. Mr. Chairman. Report. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank the uh, Highway Department for all the work they did in uh, getting the highways cleaned up over the last couple weeks. It's uh, typical South Dakota and starting to get cold here in January, and I noticed on uh, Kelloland News, they did a story about uh, our highway department uh, plowing a driveway for a pregnant lady so she could get to the hospital and deliver her baby. So I want to thank the highway department and the sheriff's department for working together to help that lady out. Appreciate it. Appreciate their work. Yeah, that's his. Thank you. Any other commissioners have anything to report? Well, that being said, I guess... Uh, we're going to go into executive session under item, which one, Drew? One, two, or three? And under one? Okay. And sub four. And, okay. One and, um, what, what was that? I move to go into executive session under SDCL 1252, sub one and sub four. Okay. Is that pending litigation and or a contract negotiation? Correct. Then I, I thank you. Okay. All right. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Obviously, call the roll, please. Commissioner Aarons. Yes. Commissioner Landine. Yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes. Commissioner Schmidt. Yes. Commissioner Gibbon. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Motion to come out of executive session. So moved. A motion by Landine. A second by. Schmidt. Schmidt. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, call the roll, then. Commissioner Aarons. Yes. Commissioner Landine. Yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes. Commissioner Schmidt. Yes. Commissioner Gibbon. Yes. Okay. Next. Okay. Uh, Tracy. Commissioners, Tracy Humphrey, HR Director. Um, I'm asking for you all to approve a one-time additional administrative leave pay for non-emergency staff affected on January 12, uh, 2024. 
We had seven um, non-emergency staff that were required to work, uh, report to work that day. Um, so we're asking for you to approve administrative leave for those hours worked. So moved. Second. Motion by Smith, second by Aarons. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, call the roll, please. Are you going to ask for public input Yes, on that? public input, please, on, on that. Okay, seeing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Eileen Dean? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Gibbons? Yes. Next. All right, my additional item is for board discussion and action on adjusting the commission administrative officer step. So the requested action is to approve Stephen Rasmussen as the commission administrative officer um, to move him from a grade 118 step two to a grade 118 step six um, with, and as a result of his annual evaluation and in consideration of his public service. Um, I've been asked to bring this to the board. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Journey. Uh, public Sorry. In, un public input. Seeing none. Okay. Um, we have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Sorry about that. Aaron's and Robbins. Yes. yes. Oh. And, excuse me. Yes. Yes. Commissioner Aaron. Yes. Commissioner Lady. Yes. Commissioner Robbins. Yes. Commissioner Smith. I'm going to vote yes, but I want to make a statement that I do this with the idea that I want to present or the commission is trying to present a unified front for our uh, administrator to get things done and get things moving. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gibbons. Yes. Thank you. Next. Any, is you, that's it, right, Tracy? Those are my items outside of the that's executive session. Okay, cool. Is there any, excuse me. Yeah. We Mr. need to go into it. Back in executive for, session for department head evaluations before that I have a housekeeping matter on uh, consent agenda item number nine the motion was to remove from the consent <coughs> agenda not to move to next week's Correct. meeting um, so we'd have to either discuss that or move make, make a motion to move that to the next week's meeting now why can't we just add it or put it on there because once you remove it to the consent agenda it goes to the regular business and so and I did not say move it I said remove it <laughs> okay well, I, I my motion was to simply remove it, not move it. Okay. So it would have been removed. Per, period. From the consent agenda. Okay. All okay. Right. Are you yeah, okay? your motion? Are you okay? Just uh, scheduling. Yeah, we can, it we can work with that. Yep. Can you can work with that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That, I think that's sufficient. If you want a different motion, fine. No, I think that's sufficient now with the clarity. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is Lennox aware of this? They will be. Remove it all together. Lennox is the one who made the request. Yeah. Because they wanted further it, communication we're from it our down office. Now? No, no, we just removed the topic. No, it's not being turned on at this time. It has to come under consideration to the board at some point because it's okay. an application. Okay, so I guess the question for Kristen, what is the motion? The, you want to reread the motion just for the record on that on the agenda. Yep. So the motion was to remove item number nine with the intention of moving it to next week. Perfect. Thank you. you go. As long as the record shows up. All right. So, is there? We have a motion and a second. Is that correct? For what? Or no? That's already done. We reread it. As okay. Well. So we don't need anything else. So now we just need a motion to go back into executive session. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Do we have a motion? I offer that motion. Second. Okay. Motion by Poppin. Second by Aaron. Um, no public input. That being said, call the roll, please. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Anybody need a break? Second that. And let's motion by Schmidt, second by Aarons. Call the roll, please. Are all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Next, do we have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Meeting is adjourned.